Okay, this is a review of the Vichy VC99 multimeter. Uh, pretty good bargain coming to China, about $35. Um, it actually looks like a pretty complete meter for electronics work. It has uh, DC volts, AC volts, um, resistance, capacitance, there's a, a frequency meter in it. It goes up to 60 megahertz according to the manual. Temperature sensor, a, a transistor tester, um, microamps, milliamps, and amps. So uh, it looks like a fully featured meter and the specs on it are actually quite good. We'll take a look at it, uh, see how it performs, and see how it's built. So there's some uh, pretty bold claims in this meter. Uh, there's a few folks on the internet selling it. Uh, you can actually get it uh, through many distributors in the States as well. They say it's as good as a Flute 17B, and uh, you can sort of see the visual similarities on it. I guess that's the uh, sincerest form of uh, flattery is to imitate uh, a meter. Uh, but it does come with a nice uh, uh, shell here. I guess it gives it a little shock resistance, and um, it's not a bad feeling meter. It's uh, not as quite as good as a, a fluke, but um, we're looking at about a $100 meter here and about a $30 meter here. So if you're uh, trying to see if a meter works actually in your workshop, it's always good to have a calibration source. This is a cute little thing called the DMM check. You can uh, pick one off of eBay if you search for that, or um, the fellow sells them direct. So one thing you're going to find is uh, that in any modern multimeter, uh, basically they're single chip construction. It's actually pretty hard to build a meter, which is inaccurate. Um, they said it was good as a Fluke 17B, so what the heck. Uh, well, at least some people on the internet say it's as good as a Fluke 17B. Um, we'll just uh, hook the meter up to measure voltages uh, with some, uh, put the meters in parallel. And uh, then we will put it onto the, the voltage reference, which uh, is a precision 5 volt uh, output. Okay, so I got it all hooked up. We got a precision uh, reference here. It does a 5 volt output, uh, the Vichy VC99. I uh, just put the fluke in parallel with it just to uh, get a sense of uh, how accurate it is. Both reading 0 volts, obviously. Uh, we'll turn it on, and uh, this uh, both should go to 5, uh, 5. 0, 0, 0, 0 volts. It's a um, nice, accurate source. So, 4996, yeah, that's definitely within the meter's uh, calibration, 498. Looks like the fluke's actually reading slightly lower than it should be. One thing this thing it does have, which is a little nicer than the fluke, it actually has a little um, bar graph here, and that's kind of nice sometimes when you're looking at variable signals. It's a little hard sometimes to decode the numeric, so you can see the bar go back and forth. That's what that's all about. So, good. I mean, it measures DC volts. Um, pretty shocking if it didn't. So this test here is resistance. So they've got three uh, very precise resistors on the board. Uh, put it in resistance mode, of course. Um, the first resistance nominally 100 kilo ohms, 100.08 looks like. So let's see it uh, catch up here. 100 kilo ohms, 100.1. Yep, sure. Um, that's uh, spot on. Actually, what the uh, the standard's supposed to show at. Next case, next one is a, a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Let's see what she looks like. 10.02, yeah, well within uh, the, the uh, specifications of the product and uh, a 1 kilo ohm resistor. Okay, um, 1 ohm off. So, perfect. Now let's check uh, the current readings, uh, pardon me, uh, current measurement. Put it in milliamp mode. Uh, this is a uh, precision 1 milliamps source, apparently. So, uh, make a course sure that you're taking your leads over to the right uh, part of the meter. and connect it to the little precision milliamp output. Turn it on. Okay, one milliamp. Awesome. Let's just see if we can go to microamps or we'll hit an overload. Okay, right at the very limit, so the uh, microamp range probably 999 and it's 9998. Yeah, so again, still very much well within the, the specs of the meter. So I think you see about any auto-ranging meters, how fast it takes to uh, figure out what the um, resistance is. This one's actually quite acceptable. That's actually quite good. Okay, so uh, next thing to do is uh, take a look at the frequency uh, measuring uh, capabilities of the thing. Um, if you really want to measure accurate frequencies, again, you really should have a frequency counter, but uh, as a quick check, not bad. It's kind of a fun thing to have built in a meter. Uh, we have this one, of course, on the Hertz rating here with the, the fluke. You put it on AC volts and you hit the Hertz button. Uh, it's at 83 uh, kilohertz right now. You can see this one's actually giving you an extra significant digit compared to the fluke. 
No, the Visha, believe it or not, is actually rated up to 60 megahertz. Uh, the Fluke only to 100 kilohertz, so there's a significant advantage over here in this meter. Uh, but let's just take it uh, past the spec of the Fluke and see, uh, see how it goes. All right, so I'm well past 100 kilohertz now. This meter is fine. Now, as you expect, there's actually a lot of uh, extra. You get a lot of extra capabilities well beyond the actual published limits, and that's good. The Fluke, though, let's poke it up about 140 kilohertz. Um, Okay, now it's struggling a little bit. You can see it's uh, having some difficulty. The, the V-Shade, quite frankly, I don't even have a generator that goes for 60 megahertz, so um, I took mine as far, far up as I could, and it was uh, bang on accurate. So um, definitely uh, meeting the specs there. Okay, so on the back of the meter here, you can sort of start seeing some of the compromises they've made to create a $30 product. Um, they make compromises, and uh, you have to decide whether those are important uh, to your application. Um, so the first thing you notice is that the, uh, the pegs for the banana leads are soldered directly onto the circuit board and what's going to happen is as the lead goes in and out, it's going to stress the solder joint and eventually you're going to get a little crack all the way around. It's called a stress fracture. Um, it's more high-end meter like the Fluke, you'll actually see that they've uh, made a little metal tab to, uh, to avoid that problem. Again, if you're aware of the problem, though, quite frankly, what happens, and it will happen, uh, you touch it up with solder. Um, on a little more discouraging note, the soldering quality, uh, there's some sort of fl flashback here. Uh, what's going to happen uh, is that these little things have a tendency to break off, and uh, if they get into your meter, obviously they're <laughs> it's going to cause a bit of a problem. So that's a little unfortunate. Hand soldering here, you see that occasionally. Uh, you try to avoid uh, hand soldering because it's actually very hard to be consistent. So uh, here we have a bit of hand soldering on the transistor tester. and um, if you're if you're sitting next to a rail guy in your life, uh, he'll tell you that this is going to uh, uh, adversely affect the reliability of an assembly. Up yep. uh, in the back here, actually, pretty promising. It looks like a piece of uh, shielding, and there's a little screw here. So um, that's a nice little touch. It actually, tells me that somebody's actually paid a little attention to uh, a detail. On the other side here, uh, really interesting. Let's take a look at uh, how they save money and. Uh, where they've uh, where they made compromises to get the thirty dollar uh, figure um, again uh, you know lower price so they've done less things out of this meter but you got to make a decision whether those are important to you uh, the first one obviously is the uh, the selector switch uh, land pattern here this is what puts the thing into its various modes uh, hopefully it shows up here in the video it's a uh, uh, silvery sheen it's probably a nickel plating um, that's sort of the first cost saving move uh, you see in a higher end meter they'll often use a, a gold plating called enig or some even hard gold plating on really high-end meters. Um, what that means, of course, eventually, if you keep on spinning the knob around enough times, eventually you start wearing this off and uh, the, the meter stops working. But again, right, if you're, unless you're doing this as a tray-type meter, uh, if you're just doing it for hobbyist work, you know, it's going to suit you well. Uh, the fuses, of course, are glass fuses, less expensive than the um, ceramic fuses. If they get really stressed, glass fuses have a bit of a habit sometimes of, uh, of actually exploding. Um, again, right, if you're doing electricity work, uh, meter panel work, electrician work, yeah, and this is probably not the meter for you, but um, you know, quite frankly, I'm looking at a meter for electronics work, and it's going to uh, be just fine for that. Uh, here's the uh, the input jacks we talked about earlier, how the uh, soldering will want a fracture. Again, that's not a, uh, it's not a great thing, but again, uh, you know, uh, when they fracture, and they will fracture eventually, touch them up with some solder. Uh, here we have the uh, precision uh, loop of wire that's used for the high current mode. Uh, here we have the little terminals for the, uh, the thermal sensor. Uh, one thing you don't see actually, uh, well, there's some thermal resistors here actually, so this thing can survive uh, some to some degree of overload, so hey, that's pretty promising. Uh, up here we start to see the adjustment pots. Uh, unfortunately, they don't look like they actually have any uh, lacquer on them to hold them in position. Uh, if those wander out, of course, your meter eventually becomes inaccurate. Uh, up here, the, uh, the little uh, connector for the transistor tester. Um, if you poke around the internet, you definitely find a few folks who've had some difficulty with this. They've actually gone to the effort of uh, resoldering it. To be honest, using a, a multimeter for a transistor tester is a little uh, a little thin. I mean, you should use a uh, transistor curve tracer. Uh, obviously, a whole different class of tool, though pretty darn expensive. Up here, the crystal. Obviously, there's going to be a little microprocessor inside the uh, semiconductor here. I mean, as I just mentioned also in a previous uh, moment, uh, 
the accuracy of the meter is entirely now up to uh, the semiconductors, and these are highly repeatable devices. It's actually kind of hard to build an inaccurate uh, meter these days because 99.9% uh, .9 of the accuracy of the meter is actually contained in here. Uh, it looks like up here we have the continuity tester, and then we've got the Ziva striping for the uh, display. So uh, these little silver terminals here that uh, get circled in red are the uh, temperature uh, terminals. You can see actually they put them pretty close to some other parts and uh, they've just slipped a little bit of uh, insulation over them to keep them from shorting out. Um, there is some called creepage distances when you really get into high voltage like the 1000 volt range. Uh, you really need to make sure you got good space between your parts. Uh, to be honest this kind of makes me a little bit nervous. Now I'm not looking for a meter that works up in the 1000 volt range. Most of the stuff I do is well below 48 volts so it's not a concern for me but um, again it's one of those things you want to take uh, close attention to if you really truly are trying to work up at some of those 1000 volt or 600 volt cat 1 cat 2 ratings. Um, you really probably want to take a look at a really high-end meter like a Fluke. In terms of accessories, it uh, looks like a pretty standard uh, set of probes here. Uh, Cat 3000 volt, Cat 4 600 volts they claim. Uh, they look adequate. I mean, uh, there's definitely better meter pre probes out there, but this is a good starter set. Uh, thermal sensor, a little unusual. not that familiar with this uh, pattern here. It looks a bit uh, um, different than what I've uh, seen previously, but um, certainly seems to work. And uh, my particular unit came with a nice little carrying case, which uh, which is nice. And uh, there was an instruction manual in here, but uh, unfortunately, it's uh, it's all uh, in Chinese. Although they appear to have an English website, so uh, perhaps we'll check that out and see if we can uh, find some English instructions. So there we have it. That's the uh, Vici VC99.